Hey guys, here we are. We're going to be doing a film study on uh, Ward Kovalev uh, 1 in preparation for Ward Kovalev 2 in just over two weeks. Um, holy crap, am I excited for this fight. Um, although, like, the first one had, like, a lot of wrestling and stuff, which is, you know, it was both fighters' faults. Um, aside from that, I thought it was an extremely entertaining and fun fight to watch. Um, we're not going to talk about who won the fight, you know, everyone has their own opinion, uh, history is always going to say that Andre Ward won the fight, no matter what, uh, so we're not going to talk about that on the channel, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we're going to look at the skills that each of them used, um, to any degree of success, and to any degrees of failure, um, and we're going to try to kind of find out, uh, how, the second fight is going to look, you know, look for some specific skills for each of the fighters, um, and kind of make a, like a little breakdown for how the second fight's going to play out and what their keys to victories are going to be. Um, I don't, I'm going to say this right out the gate. I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I was an Andre Ward fan when he was in the Olympics. You know, it was a big deal where I was when I was living there. Um, it's, I don't have anything against Ward. I don't have anything against Kovalev. I don't care who wins the fight. Um, I'm just glad that the fight got made uh, and that Ward didn't decide to retire. I'm excited to see the next one. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not sure if I have any, anything else to say before we get into it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. And right away, the fight kind of starts off pretty quick. Um, with uh, there's a lot of lead hand control and like control of their opponents and I'll try to I'll try to talk about it. I might sometimes I might break things down a little too much for you guys. I know you guys are smart and I do it a little bit too much. I say absolutely everything, kind of like what I'm doing now. But anyway, let's get into it. Kovalev showing him the jab, showing him the jab, and then throws a right hand. So if you break that down, you see uh, Ward touch gloves with them, right? With that first jab, right? And then he goes to touch gloves with him with the second one. But Kovalev throws a right to the body. I'm not sure if you guys see it. Touch glove. And when he shows him the, the jab again, and, and uh, Ward reacts to it by trying to touch gloves, Kovalev switches it up and throws a right hand to the body. Now, that's like your very, like, very basic probing, right? You want to stick your glove out there, show them something. And then when they react to it, you want to you wanna punch and create offense based on what they give you and he leans in to touch gloves again and then Kovalev although he misses the shot throws a right to the body and that's probing right so then we got Ward come in here and one of the misconceptions I think he has about Kovalev is that Kovalev has like a bad defense so the first thing he does is he comes in here and tests his defense throws like a wild swinging left hook um, but Kovalev's a good fighter uh, just like any, you know, world champion, uh, and he sees the punch coming, uh, and he's able to get under it. Uh, one good thing that Ward does do right after he throws it is, boom, Kovalev goes to control him, and when his arm is stretched out like that, uh, Kovalev, or Ward ducks, right? He gets under it. A little defensive responsibility right there to make sure he doesn't get uh, hit with a huge crusher right hand. Um, but, you know, it caught, cats, ugh, catches... Kovalev off guard and Kovalev's not ready to throw a punch. He's like, oh, where did that even come from? But um, Ward not really setting that punch up, right? And obviously that's why it doesn't land. Um, but, uh, you know, and that's one of the interesting things about Ward is usually he's got enough hand speed that it doesn't even matter if your opponent is you know, ready for the punch or you set it up sometimes. Uh, because usually when you're faster or like you have that, those kinds of advantages over your opponent, um, uh, your speed is enough to make your opponent always be out of position, you know, because they're just not able to, you know, always defend themselves from such quick punches. A little bit of fainting going on, you know, faints from, um, from Kovalev, from Ward 2, establishing lead hand dominance. And it's interesting because Ward is the one that has lead hand dominance right here. He's the one, and then he gives it away a little for a second, right? And when he gets it, he has his glove out there. Kovalev reacts to it, but Ward just moves back. You know, maybe they're just testing the waters, right? But that was his opportunity 
to do exactly what Kovalev did to him just 10 seconds ago, right? And throw a right hand and catch him, you know, by using the, the lead hand dominance as a probe and not just to necessarily control the distance. You know, if you're not probing and you're not using what your opponent gives you off of the probe, it's not really probing. But anyway, lead hand dominance, feints him upstairs, right? Bop, bop, shows him another one and inches forward and then throws a body shot. Uh, I can't tell if it lands on his body or it hits, hits his bicep, but it doesn't matter. And look at how look at how Ward after he comes out, right? And he's he moves out and he keeps his head down, right? He's got his right glove tucked, right? And he's got like kind of um you know a, a bent down Mayweather shoulder roll look kind of going, right? Fainting, right? And I think what he's doing here, if and we'll remember it later on for just like you know not super far into the fight. But it looks like he's trying to bait a punch from Kovalev. And we'll see how he does that later. And then right here, notice how he, when he was baiting the shot, right, he was dipped down. But now I don't think he wants the shot, right? And he's kind of showing lead hand dominance, lead hand dominance. And what does Kovalev do? He tests him, throws a jab. And Ward does catch the jab. But even though um, Ward is the one with uh, lead hand dominance, and he's the one controlling, making Kovalev react to what he's doing. Um, Ward so far isn't really taking advantage of it, right? Gives him a feint again, goes for the body shot, right? Same thing uh, that he did earlier, and I can't tell again if he gets a piece of it, but, you know, Kovalev kind of picking up on it. Um, another thing I want to talk about is if you look at Ward's footwork, right? As soon as he steps with his left foot, he explodes into that jab, you know, he he feints it a little bit and then throws it, but it's off of him stepping off of his lead foot, right? So boom, and then steps in, right? And he does the same thing right here, you can hardly see it, and Kovalev sees that that's going to be his rhythm for his punching and controls him when he goes in, and it kind of catches Ward off guard a little bit. Uh, just really interesting, some stuff to look forward, uh, to look for uh, as we move on, right? And now he probes, feints him. And notice how he doesn't react to the feint, so Kovalev throws a jab to the body. One thing I want to talk about right here, look at Kovalev's eyes, right? His, he's, he dips down to his right, right, to, so that he'll slip a jab, and the right hand has so much farther to go. But he's really watching Ward and kind of getting a look at him and what he's doing in response to that jab to the body. And you'll, we'll see why later, too. But here we go. Whoops, sorry. Fainting, fainting. Ward fainting, fainting, and look at how he's kind of dipping down again, right? He's showing him the lead hand dominance, but he's not erect, right? He's not standing straight up like he was before. Shows him the lead hand dominance and gets Kovalev to punch with him and immediately ducks down and tries to get under his jab, right? And what winds up happening, right? Kovalev controls his head, right? He tries to throw the right hand, but he's not able to control his head. Um, I mean, he is, but he's not able to control him and create space because Andre Ward wraps his hand around Kovalev's body, so that forces Kovalev to put his arm around um, around Ward and start throwing these body shots. You know, in this instance, you know, um, well, let's talk about this first. This is a this is the key strategy from Andre Ward uh, during the course of this fight is to get under the under the jab and get his head under there, but what he wants to do is he wants to pull it out from there and then get his head into his chest so he can work on the inside, right? But the way that he's doing it, you know, holding Kovalev, you know, not the greatest, right? He does better instances of it later on in the fight. So I don't necessarily disagree with Kovalev putting him in a headlock after Ward wraps his arm around his body. You know, that's kind of like, you know, eye for an eye, but um, you just hope not to see either of it, right? But anyway, that was also predicated off of Ward setting up that little trap. Remember I told you I'd talk about it later, where Ward's kind of ducking down and fainting a little bit, and he was baiting Ward to throw, or he was baiting Kovalev to throw a jab, and that's what's going to happen every time he's able to bait him into doing it. Some good fainting, good fainting. Faint, faint. And now, notice how off of these feints, right, Let's go back to this one, right? Faint. <coughs> um, faint. And now he faints again, and Kovalev doesn't react this time, right? He, he reacted to the other ones, right? So right here, right? Kovalev shoots to the, to the outside, right? Moves back, right? 
goes to his high guard, you right active guard, boom, boom, and then he doesn't, as soon as he stops reacting to the feints, right, it winds up being more like probing, right, as soon as he stops, that's when it's safe to punch, because he knows that, um, because Kovalev in his mind, he knows he's trying to set up a different punch, but as soon as he stops respecting the, the feint, that allows him to just throw the jab, and that's exactly what happens there. Now, again, right after he throws the jab, because he's still on that faint plan, right? Kovalev in his mind is still on there. It allows Co um, Ward to throw another jab. And again, the same thing, right? Um, he goes to throw the jab. And notice how Sergei didn't set it up. He didn't probe. He didn't um, control the distance between them. And even though he gets the jab off and it might touch him, Ward is in perfect position to control his head and keep him away, create distance, and throw a right hand. Right, and that's that's exactly what happens when you when you're not setting your punches up, when you're not probing, when you're not fainting, when you're not doing those things. You go from having with feints, having success with your jabs here, boom, to having success here, and then not having success at all there. Right, and that's the difference. That's why it's so important. But then after, uh, they're so close. Right, look at how close they are. He's he's already in danger. There's no. Um, um, no more range finders, right? There's no one controlling the distance with their hands, and he's able to kind of, I think he lands a jab. It doesn't even matter. But the reason that he's able to have success there is because um, they're already so close, and neither one of them are controlling the distance, right? So let's go back to here after, right after. Again, really close. Faints him, shoots a body shot. He hits a shot on the way out, right, which is fine. But, um, you know, you'd hope a little bit more defensive responsibility, controlling him or whatever. But, you know, it's going to happen sometimes. Comes in. Boom. And what happens? Neither one of them are really setting their punch up. And that's why they both get hit, right? But Ward explodes out of his guard. And uh, I think, you know, um, Kovalev was timing him and catches him with his own good shot, too. Um, but really good stuff from, from Kovalev there. And then right after, um, catches him, shows him a jab. Ward reacts to it. He has to respect it. Faints with the right hand, gets Ward to react to that one too, and then sneaks that left hand in there. Um, and it's kind of a jab, but it's more like a cross. You know, Kovalev gets a lot of power into it. Um, I think that the first one might have been a cross too, the first one that kind of stunned Ward. You know, maybe it just caught him off balance, maybe whatever, it doesn't matter. But the first one was definitely a, a cross, too, I think. But right after, um, what does Ward do? He gets underneath the jab, just like I said earlier. It's part of his game plan for trying to work on the inside or whatever. Gets under his jab and gets his head to his right side, uh, or his left side, and wraps his arms around him. And now, I don't have a problem with these punches right here. Right, because Ward's the one that's holding. You know, Kovalev hasn't put him into a headlock yet. Now he does, right? But Ward's not letting go of his body, and that's why it kind of looks like Kovalev is not taking him out of the headlock, right? But that that clinch being initiated by Ward, understandably, you know, he just got kind of rocked and then put out of position. And now, right after that, right, we're talking about probing and the difference. Um, um, the different styles of, not not styles, but the different educations and jabs, right? So in the beginning of the round, we had Kovalev probing with his jab, controlling the space between them, and, and Ward would touch gloves with him, then Ward would touch gloves with him again, and then Kovalev would throw the right hand, right? But when, when they wouldn't react to either's uh, lead hand dominance and probing, then it was safe for them, both of them, to throw a jab, right? To catch the other with a jab. Um, so what happens here, Ward sticks out his glove, you know, probe, right, probe again, and then he immediately launches a right hand, right, rather than sticking to the, the probing style of um, throwing a jab, he throws a punch as Kovalev is in uh, exact position to defend it, right, he doesn't actually get Ward to move out of position to allow him to land that right hand, and that's, that's why you... You probe with your jab, and then you throw the same punch, right? Because your opponent is expecting the, the other punch. That's why they're waiting for it. Um, and in this case, you know, Ward doesn't use the information that he's getting from Kovalev, that Kovalev's not going to react to the feint and waits for the right hand. Um, and that's why he's not able to land that one. 
Anyway, then Ward goes into some head control, holding his head down, tries to rake him with an uppercut. I don't agree with that. I don't think he should be holding his head down, but it was very smart of him to hold his head down here, but he should not be punching when he does it. Anyway, probing, right? So again, Ward ducking down, showing him the jabs, right? And again, I think he's trying to bait Kovalev into throwing a jab right there, a jab to the head, so he can slide under his guard. But what does Kovalev do? Nothing. He's just, you know, shooing him the, the, um, let's go back one more frame. So Kovalev's active guard, right? Dipping to his left, dipping to his right, dipping to his left and his right again, right? And then because he's not reacting to any of these, you know, um, these looks that he's giving him, he kind of just throws a punch. And then, you know, Ward says, man, I ain't about that shit, and throws his own punch too. Um, and then again, right, what I said earlier. And I want to talk about this real quick, um, this jab. Uh, it sucks that the framing here isn't... Um, it like cuts right right as Kovalev throws this punch. But Kovalev hops in with this jab. And notice how he doesn't commit to this jab, right? He just throws it out. And then he stays in position to punch, right? And that's, that's him probing. I think what he's doing right there is trying to get Ward to counter with him. As you saw just a second ago when he did throw the jab, right? Boom. And then immediately Ward answers back, right? So what does he do? He gives him a probe, waits for the answer back, and then uh, trying to see if he can set Ward up, like set a trap for him off of what Ward's telling him. Uh, but it doesn't work, right? But notice what Kovalev does right away, right? He didn't react to the feint before, right? He just moved back, so now he just jabs him again, throws a couple of jabs, right? And catches him with them. But what, is, what does he do after that? He throws the right hand, and that's the punch that Ward was expecting, and he's able to block it, even though he eats another jab. Um, <clears throat> but that's why it's important, right? Because if you saw when Ward probed, probed, and threw the right hand, Kovalev was ready for it. This time, right, Kovalev probed, didn't, didn't see any reaction from Kovalev, and then caught him with two jabs, even though when he threw the right hand, uh, Ward was ready for it because that's what he was waiting for in the first place uh, and then lands another jab But that's why it's important or that's why you you take what your opponents giving you right when they're not using it You get it whatever <laughs> um, Anyway after he does that Ward gets tries to get under the jab and then this is exactly where he wants to be This is where he wants to be and notice how even though Kovalev has head control uh, Because Ward's hips are so far out. He's gonna be able to work right but Kovalev does something really smart, gets on top of him. I don't agree with him punching him right there, right? I don't agree with the punch, right? Boom. But he pushes his head out, right? And then brings his head up, right? Rather than just putting him into that Muay Thai clinch where Ward can work, right? He pushes his head out and then brings it up so that he can grab hold of his arms rather than just having control of the top of his head. And that stops him from taking any punches, you know? I think that he would have gotten away with that had he not punched Ward at the same time. Um, and I agree with that. I don't think he should be punching Ward while he's holding his head down, even if it's punches to the body and not to the head. But anyway, some probing or some fainting from Ward. And what happens there? Kovalev fainting a little bit too. And he reacts to the probe, right? And this is, this is really interesting, right? Because... He, he's probing, uh, Ward is the one with the control, right? And then War, uh, Kovalev reacts to it and catches him with the body shot. Kovalev does have his head controlled, right? But he's in, but, um, by the jab from Ward, but, but Kovalev doesn't take any return fire, right? And the difference between uh, using a probe, like, I'm not sure what Ward's thinking, right? Like, is it, is it part of his game plan? Is he expecting a specific response from Kovalev, or, um, or like why why is he controlling the space and then not moving back when he gets uh, Kovalev to respond, right? Because he 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 forces Kovalev out of position while he has control of him. That's his opportunity to catch him with the counter, and he's not able to. And like that's the difference between 
like just controlling space with your jab and keeping your opponent like honest, right? Uh, because they're worried from, about a punch. Um, and actually probing and making them respond to the probe and then landing up offense off of that, right? It, it's really subtle and I don't, I'm not sure if I'm getting the point across. But I'll be able to show you guys later in round two more, more appropriately. Um, probing, probing. <clears throat> and then he feints the right hand and sees how Ward is, um, Ward is reacting. And then just goes in with the jab, right? And again, Ward slides under the jab, gets his head to the left side of his body, right? And what does Kovalev do? Puts him in a headlock, you know, so that he can't slide in and then get his head onto Kovalev's chest and then start working on the inside. Now, it's, it's a really strange tactic to... Because he, Ward doesn't have to get his head under Kovalev's arm in order to slip the jab, right? He's already slipped the jab, but it's part of his game plan to kind of close the distance by getting his head under there and then working out of it. Uh, and it's not really working for him in the course of this fight. Whoops. And then again, Ward doesn't set the punch up, throws a left hook, and then he eats a jab. And then, you know, good responsibility, uh, defensive responsibility from Ward after he catches him with that jab and rolls under the, what would be the next shot. Ooh. And right here, that's exactly what, what Ward wants to do all night long. And this is beautiful right here. This is real inside fighting. I, I'm, I really like this, this aspect of it. Let's kind of slow it down a little bit. Now, if you notice after the referee break, um, I was talking before about lead hand dominance and controlling the space between your, your, uh, each fighter and why it's important. Uh, because as the leading fighter, right, as the one with lead hand dominance, um, your opponent's reacting to what you're giving them, right? And when, when Ward would have lead hand dominance, uh, Kovalev... Would be, would, would be the one reacting to him by throwing jabs to the body and Ward wasn't able to make anything, make anything happen out of it, right? Whereas when you're not using the lead hand dominance, the fighter coming forward has control of the space between each other and, and the other fighter because they're reacting to him now. Um, so he feints, then after the feint, right, he rolls in, he slips inside, giving him another look, right? And it's really important because if he only used the one feint, um, it, it winds up being like wildly ineffective because Kovalev can just jab him or do whatever he does, but he, he winds up um, fainting, coming in, and then that prompts the jab from Kovalev, and, and he's able to get under it. Kovalev does the right thing by controlling his head, but look at where his head winds up being. It's not under his armpit like before when Ward would roll under the jab, but he gets it on his chest, and this is like the Muay Thai clinch I was saying earlier. He's able to hold him here and land a body shot here and then a left body shot right there and then Kovalev pushes him off. And that is beautiful inside fighting. He works his way in with a feint and then with a head roll and gets under the jab. Um, that's some really high level stuff right there. Even though he doesn't exactly know... <coughs> Excuse me. I think this cop would go away, man. It's been a month. Um... He doesn't exactly know how Kovalev is going to react, but giving him multiple feints cuts off a lot of the avenues that he has to respond in the, in the first way uh, and winds up landing a couple good body shots. Some good fainting, and again, check this out, immediately after the feints, Ward starts dipping down to his right, right? Telegraphing that he's going to roll under the, he's going to get under the shot and then body up with, with Kovalev. But what does Kovalev do? He says, nah, I ain't about that shit, man. Fuck that. Yeah, and he doesn't. He decides not to throw a punch. And then Ward does the same exact trick because it's still on his mind. Um, Kovalev does kind of catch him with the jab, I think. Let me make sure. Boom, yeah. But then look at how... This is really strange, you know, because he, he rolls... He gets caught with the shot, and then when he slides in, he comes straight up with his head, right? That's not... That's not appropriate, you know. He, if this winds up being a a recurring theme in the fight, you know, Ward should probably get a warning for that. It's very dangerous, um, and th that's the hardest part of of your entire body is that the top of your head right there. Uh, and he could do some real damage to Kovalev with a headbutt like that. Um, luckily for Kovalev, he slips it. 
right? Controls his head and doesn't take any shots, but really dangerous stuff there. Again, right? Shows him the feint. The, pro, uh, the feint again. Kovalev doesn't react to it, and he lands a body shot. Again, look at how, how dipped down he is right here, right? Waiting for the jab from Kovalev. And uh, Kovalev's like, nope. Feints with the right hand. And then because Kovalev, or because Ward doesn't react to it, he's perfectly in line for the jab. And that kind of goes counterintuitively to what I said earlier. You know, when you faint and they don't react to the first punch, you don't want to throw a different one, the one that they're waiting for. But I do think that Ward was actually waiting for the right hand anyway. But anyway, great round. Um, Ward showing that he's got some really interesting tricks, right? Baiting the jab when he... Um, uh, when he's really close and he's got he's ducked down waiting for the jab so he can close the distance and fight on the inside really sneaky stuff uh, very interesting craft from him um, and Kovalev showing that he's got a great understanding of feints uh, and probes and how he sets up his offense um, and knowing you know when to throw one punch when to throw another um, and having a great game plan for the inside fighting of Ward uh, it's really interesting because do you say that Ward should not be coming in with his head like he does, putting his head onto the body of Kovalev to avoid punches? Or do you say that Kovalev should not be putting him in a headlock when he does it? You know, and the, the headlock is kind of predicated on Ward also wrapping his arm around Kovalev's body so Kovalev can't move away so that he can, after he gets into that position, he can roll his head up onto his chest and land punches. Um, you know, who do you say is at fault? You know, they're both kind of doing something. You know, even though Ward's initiating it, the last thing that happens is Kovalev has him in a headlock. It's just a weird spot to be in. Um, but anyway, a great round. Both fighters having some pretty good success with um, with the fainting and the probing. Uh, and, uh, just a really technical round. Really fun to watch. Anyway, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if I, if I missed anything or you saw something I didn't. Uh, and let me know in the comments. Thanks, guys.